by the river. So many stories about vampires in Europe and not in other, any other continent. But then I realised that vampires are killed by holy water and they bless the rains down in Africa. Yeah, you can rhyme anything with Serengeti. You've made it. Um, yeah. Actually, I'll tell you one other thing. Do you know what the opposite of ladyfingers is? Oh, God. Oh, well. <laughs> Mentos. Gentlemen's. <laughs> oh. 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 And finally, finally, I'd like to tell you about that chiropractor story. But then I told you, I remember I told you it, I told you about it a week back. Anyway, hello everyone, and welcome. <laughs> boo, boo! Your your jokes are bad. You must feel bad. Um, hello everyone, <laughs> welcome to Black Dog 113. I'm Lee. I'm not Darren, and I may be Jim at some points. <laughs> okay, yes, as you may have guessed, we don't have Darren. Um, he um phoned in sick. Miserable sod. No, it's his age has got to him, and basically his flu jab, <laughs> or or maybe or maybe or some the police other... have caught up with him. Yeah, or the police have caught up with him. <laughs> yeah, first of interest. <laughs> yeah, he's been he's been flagged by the uh, by Interpol, and they're currently hunting him down. So anyway, Darren's not here this week. Um, we will continue without him, um, and he will be back next week. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to find out how everyone's week's been. And then we don't have any feedback for last week's episode, which was um, see how they run. Um, and then what we'll do is we will skip lightly over the lack of feedback into the world of this week's first unconventional Christmas movie. Because, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have a season. We have done it. I've even got a jingle. <laughs> Unconventional Christmas movie season <laughs> starts here, starts today, and it starts with your your episode, Jim, which is? Um, I'll, I'll get you my pretty. No, <laughs> where am I lovely? I'll get you, you my mentioned pretty. Toto. Well, <laughs> you mentioned Toto, my mind went to Wizard of Oz. What can I say? <laughs> that's, an unconven- <laughs> that's an unconventional leap. But- <laughs> That, that's a very bad default saying, isn't it? It's like, oh, I'll get you, my pretty. Um, um, um. <laughs> yes, I'll get you and your little dog, Tutu, too, down in the rains of Africa. <laughs> now, that's a crossover musical I want to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Toto's Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Toto's Wizard of Oz, where a dog just wanders about going, what the fuck kind of sh- mushrooms is she on? As he wanders around a farm watching his <laughs> watching his owner pretending to talk to a tin man. <laughs> uh, did she really eat those mushrooms? Oh, she thinks she's in a tornado. Anyway, um, so yes, we will we'll get to Beware My Lovely, um, which is an interesting uh, film, to say the least. And we'll get onto that, and then it'll be onto my choice, and then pimping and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but let's get on with this week's ep- episode, as is. And we'll start with how our weeks were, and we'll start with you, Jim, and uh, how's it been? Um... It's been a yeah. week. <laughs> it's so, been a week, yeah. Uh, most of yesterday I was uh, in a hospital um, mm. uh, to see it. Well, I had an appointment to see the consultant. Well, I didn't realise that after I saw the uh, the consultant, it was a very nice man, mm. I'd be having a battery of tests to uh, assess me for um, fitness for surgery. Ah. Oh. Uh, and um, also uh, get to speak to <laughs> I have to meet the anaesthetist who would take me through what what goes on on that end of things as well. Ah, okay. Uh, so uh, a ten o'clock appointment. I got home at four. <laughs> wow, good yeah. work. So, um, I mean, mm. no, they were not. I'm not saying it was inefficient. It was just a kind of it was a bit of a clunky day. Going, all right, that's all right. Back to the waiting room, and now there's some nurses will see you. Do some more tests, and go back to the waiting room. And then you go for some more tests. Then go for an X-ray. <laughs> mm. So, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a cough to be in a hospital. Yeah, <laughs> you, sh- you should get people. that scene too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, this consultant I saw was actually um, a mm. surgical consultant, which mm. is good. Uh, 
Mm. Um, and basically, um, I will be in the hospital at the end of this week, mm -hmm. uh, overnight Thursday for a procedure Friday mm. morning. Um, basically, you must put the camera down into my lungs again to have a good look around. Mm -hmm. And also, there will be another procedure which involves uh, slitting, like a small incision in my throat to check out all the lymph system as well. Right. So basically, yeah, he has a full working knowledge of what's going on in there. Right. Um, but he said from the all the scans and previous tests, he's not convinced. Mm. There's one big lump that's definitely cancerous. Right. That's, that's the main one. And there's another little one on the other side. Mm. He's not convinced that is necessarily cancerous or a threat right now. It might mm. just be some sort of <clears throat> weird anomaly. Right. So he wants to be a hundred percent sure what that is before doing anything else. Mm. Um, basically. Um, but um and obviously he's liaising with other consultants who handle other bits of my treatment, like maybe possible chemo radiotherapy, because the other lump might just be needle quick zap or or it might mm. just be dormant, might be yeah. keep tabs on it. But uh, as regards to the other lump, he says, Well, you know, the the feeling is the the best way forward is to cut it out, which yeah. um will mean um lungs are a bit like broccoli. Yes. You can't just sniff a little bit off. Oh, right. I thought you were going to say kids don't like eating them. <laughs> well, no, that's true as well. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, but he's talking about uh, like, um, possibly, depending on the thing on Friday, next week maybe, or the week after, I'll be going in and he will cut it out, which will involve I will lose two-thirds of one lung. Oof. Holy yeah. <laughs> shit. Um, <clears throat> now, that's a lot, isn't it? Mm. Well, as I say, you can't just take a bit. <laughs> Right, you've got you've got to take a because it's all branches and whatnot, and where mm. it is, mm. you're gonna to have to take quite a several big lobes of the lung off completely. Mm. But that's the only way to be sure it's not it can't have spread anywhere. Yes, yeah. you know what I mean. It's kind of you can't just keep going in and nipping a little bit off. No. They like to do is once and get it right, mm. and they do take a kind of. Right, we will take all that area out and say, get out of that one, Rommel, sort of situation. Yeah. But you couldn't have got there in a million years, you little cunt. Ah, yeah. You know. <laughs> right. Not that they, they just weren't his words, by the way. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> in his medical. In his medical. He, he was Scottish, but he wasn't Rab C. Nesbitt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah, but, but apparently, um, uh, the interesting thing is, uh, I said, well, what, what, what does that mm. kind of effect going to have on me, obviously? Yeah, what's the impact? Yeah. Um, well, he said, actually, he said, as you recover, you will regain your lung capacity. You'll never get back 100%, but no one uses mm. their lungs 100% anyway, mm. unless you're maybe an athlete. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, most people, we wouldn't use a fraction of our lungs to breathe. Mm. Um, he said, you know, you might not be able to run as far without getting out of breath or dig the garden as much before you get out of breath, but it won't be, you'd be surprised how unmajor it is. Mm. Because apparently what, what the lungs do, and this is incredible, right. but the, I, the need just told me this as well, so it must be on the level. Yeah. But when you have lose a part of your lung, the remaining lung will actually spread out and fill in the gap to compensate. Wow. Like a tree. And wow. uh, the need just told me in the old days where, surgery so wasn't sophisticated and if you had any sort of thing wrong with lung just take the whole lung out mm -hmm. he said even then the other lung would try and grow around the heart to fill the other cavity wow okay <laughs> and, and, and isn't that amazing that is pretty darn good <laughs> yeah. and somewhat reassuring i think <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean it's kind of the human body is is a constant source of amazement you know what i mean mm, uh, definitely yeah yeah I can't believe that. You actually try and one lung and try and grow across, try and get around the heart. Like, Jesus. I'm going to compensate. Yeah. I'm wishing me a wig, man. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So. Fantastic. Well, I mean, you know, obviously mm. not ideal to uh, to lose the, the lung as it is, but uh, to lose the bits of the lung as it is, but, you know, to know that it's not going to affect you that much or hopefully not affect you that much is uh, at least encouraging, surely. Well, uh, the way I see it is, you know, I said, you know, if, is it going to affect me walking the dog? He said, no, that's mm. fine. I'm happy, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we do have a garden to dig. It's all, it's all pavement. Mm. And uh, I only believe you should run if, if you're being chased. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm all good. Well, cool. Okay. <laughs> um, 
and uh, it probably took a while to <laughs> recover uh, to recover and mm-hmm. uh, get back to speed. But you know, it's um, if that puts a stop to it, so be it. That's I will, yeah, I will take that road and um, damn right, you know what I mean. So yeah, but yeah, so it, it could could be in as soon as the eighth for this operation, depending on mm. what he thinks about what the other one is. And mm. then he has to consult with the other consultants, but they were, right. Uh, okay. So we'll see. So we <laughs> we shall see. Right. Okay. Mm. Well, I mean, I say fingers crossed, but you got the experts involved, so my fingers aren't going to help at all. Well, this is I'm not worried because it's kind of like you know, kind of well, you know, it's kind of out of my hands really now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can say yay or nay. Hmm. I mean, the consultant said, he said, we've got two options. You know, mm. I, I could do do this as keyhole surgery or I could make a big incision and do it. Mm. And uh, I said, well, well, what would you prefer? Because yeah, you're going to do it. Yeah. He said, well, I'd prefer the big incision. I can see what I'm doing better. I said, well, you're, that, that's what we'll do then. You know, I'm, like, <laughs> no, I'm not asked about having a large scar. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd rather have a large scar and be alive than mm. a discreet keyhole surgery die and Scar and finally missed a bit and I fucking die. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) This is a time and a place for vanity and this is not it. (laughs) Mm. You know, so, ah, you know, know, whatever you're happy with, you know, you go go for your life. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing, I know you you, you you have patient consent and I have to be consulted, but I don't fucking know what needs to be done. You do. (laughs) Don't ask me. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) You know. Don't don't, don't ask me what I'm doing. I don't have a dog and bark myself. What the hell? You get on with it. (laughs) Do what you need to do, my friend. But yeah, I'll be apparently the first uh, podcaster he's operated on. So there you are. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know, give us give us his name, and basically we'll name and shame him if you don't come back. <laughs> 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 He'll learn the power of podcasts. All four hundred of those people will avoid that man like a plague. Yeah. <laughs> All mm. oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah it's, uh, so it's one, it's one of those things when I got the letter, because I didn't, I had a photo. Well, when we first said, oh, can you come see the consultant? I knew I was potentially being referred to a surgeon as well, but I didn't know mm. oh, until I got the letter through the post. Mm. And it was gonna, when I got it, I'm going, oh, it's, mm. it's in the uh, cardiothoracic surgery department. Yeah. <laughs> it's going, oh, they're going to do surgery. And yeah. going, you know, because I, I wasn't sure if that would even be an option, because to be honest, it's not mm. for most people. Yeah. Um, so I would, I've kind of almost stopped worrying <laughs> mm. from this point on. I was going, yep, they're going to cut it out. Rock on. <laughs> yep, that's it. Good, good for me. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's it's no good. It's no good going for the uh, no good going for the yes. But c- what can you preserve? I want to look as good as I can. Kind of a, <laughs> of a approach to this thing, isn't it? It's like no, fuck it. I don't want to be the best looking corpse in the in the place. Just get rid of the fucker. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Just do what you have to do. Mm. No, and then, down with that. You know, I'm looking forward to, you know, claiming I was in a knife fight or fighting a shark. Yeah. In- <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you know. That's it. Well, there's a scar, there's a story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do a yeah. recreation. Might get a couple of pints out of it down the pub, you know. <laughs> oh, I was bitten by a shark. No, you weren't. Well, what about that then? Yeah, yeah it's like a look at that. Yeah. Pint of Bailey's, please. Off your pop. <laughs> Yeah, it's an it's an unconventional recreation of the um of the scar scene in Jaws, but I'll I'll go with it. Yeah, standing in a pub, lifting your shirt up to get a pint of Bailey's. But I tell you what, good on you, Jim. <laughs> awesome, right? And I, I'm I'm almost afraid to say anything else because I think that's a fairly comprehensive um. Yeah, so I'll leave it at that. But... <laughs> Fair enough. Leave him laughing, that's what leave, I always say. Yeah, leave him wanting more. <laughs> no more, no. <laughs> You've taken a fucking half a lung. Piss off. <laughs> no more. Um, right, okay. Well, then over to you, Elton. How about you, sir? Well, um, mm. nothing. Absolutely. nothing. I, I've been racking my brain. <laughs> mm. a, a fridge turned up. Right, um, so that's cured. Yes, that's cured. That's it, yes. Mm. It lives! Hurrah! Yes. Um, no, that, it, I'm thankful for a quiet week. Mm. Always. Yeah, I am just counting my blessings that it's been a quiet one, mm-hmm. and I've been able to get myself together a little bit. That's uh, good. Yeah. 
Sometimes I, you just need that. I I did buy some more pens though. <gasps> <laughs> oh, we're on to pen talk. Yeah. Hold on, I, hold on. Have you got hold a jingle? <laughs> uh, no, no, I haven't got a jingle, but I will have in a second. Hold on, just <laughs> hold the line. Hold the line. St- oh st- Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's really it? not worth it. It is. It, <laughs> it is. is. It's totally it is. worth it. It is. Hold on. Hold on. It's almost there. Hold on. Let me just turn the volume down before it goes too carried away. There you go. Hold on. Here we go. No. Oh, there you go. Production on the fly. And what we're going to do today mm. is uh, draw Stonehenge out of chalk. <laughs> okay, go for it. So, so what, what, mm. we, we start here with little grassy knolls. <laughs> look rather light and look at the sunlight catching across the, the grassy knolls. And, there, and there's the shooter, and there's President Kennedy. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and there he goes, and now he's, he's facing the wrong direction. Mm. Quick, yeah. quick, take the shot, take the shot. <laughs> yes, and now, children, you can use that flash of lovely red. <laughs> <laughs> right, back and to the left. <laughs> <laughs> So, so anyway, pen talk as opposed to assassinations of presidents. Well, I, I'm, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> you get it all on this show, don't you? It's it's a wide gamut of um, of subjects. Isn't it about that time as well? Isn't it? Oh, don't I don't? Oh God, that would be perfect, wouldn't it? We've just we, I've just come up. No, with... it's the twenty third. It's the twenty third. We've missed it. Oh, oh right, okay. okay. We're well, like say... Kennedy. I've come up, I've come up with jingle comedy gold on the fly, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I've just got to cut it all out because I've offended like an entire nation. Ah, screw <laughs> them. They'll be all right. They'll be fine. Mm. They got plenty more presidents. Um, so- <laughs> 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 um well, uh, like I said, it's really not worth this hassle because I'm still waiting for them to turn up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck sake. <laughs> so well all of, all of this was pen talk. I haven't got any. It's a, a pen prequel, right? <laughs> but I'm just Penquil. saying. I, I I ended up purchasing some more because yes. I, I and I'm I'm just trying out a, a few different alcohol based ones, right? Just to see how I go. And uh, yeah, I bought a nice collection, so we mm. we shall see what they are in the coming weeks. What make are they? Oh, I they are not a make. Ah, right. They they are just Some proper pens, <laughs> pens alcohol based. <laughs> Let's see how we go with these type pens. Okay, so yeah. they're they're not. So once they arrive from China on that boat through the Suez Canal, you'll be <laughs> you'll eventually tell us all about them. <laughs> be tried out by them won't they? they will <laughs> <laughs> you'll just you'll just have a felt brush got plastic sticks Plas- plastic stick with felt brush <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my Pla- pet my alcohol pens are to them and some cunt drank them all <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, it's just one drunken stowaway sucking with like multicoloured mouth sucking on your pens. Have you been eating skittles? No, I tasted the rainbow. I was banned from the Qatar World Cup. There you go. Oh, all right then. So yeah, that's my week. You'd be able to fill it. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Nature abhors a vacuum. Yeah. Now, 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 what I've got to do is I've got to talk for Darren and me, and fill thirty-five minutes worth of time. No, um, my week's been pretty damn dull as well. I mean, yeah, I think the only thing that's um that's actually happened is that I um. <laughs> Is that I've I've watched like four more episodes of a, a TV show called The Peripheral. I don't know if oh, I mentioned Oh yes, it we've last... started watching that. Yes. Yes, yeah. Mm. Um it's intriguing, but like all like all sort of like streaming shows, they've kind of hit a uh, shall we say a, a ticking over point. And it's just like ah, I, I, so this whole episode was just backstory for something you could have told us throughout the other eight episodes ah, kind okay. of situation so it, it's got a bit of a netflix kind of lag to it towards the sort of like last couple of episodes 
but I'm quite enjoying it. Otherwise, you did you you say you watching it, Jim? Yeah, yeah, we're we're sort of having fun with it. Actually, it's just mm. kind of um, um, I don't know, it's just uh, mm. and just join the drip feed of stuff. I know what you mean it's just kind of it's probably going to be turn out as two episodes too long. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. it's kind of as we sort of we binge the first two, then we watching it week by week. That's not been too bad. Yeah. Um. So we did, we did have a good move. I think three episodes in, we said, "Hang on, her yeah. brother." Hmm. He was the wanker boyfriend in Midsummer, wasn't he? That's right. Yes, he was the wanker boyfriend. Yeah, and it's kind of oh, well played, sir. Cause I, I mm. like really like him in this, and I fucking hated his character in Midsummer. I yes. just thought I was just opposed to, it, but it's kind of like, oh wow, <laughs> that's really mm. such a completely different man. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of, yeah, very good, good work. Yeah, he, well done, fella. <laughs> his whole his whole arc and the whole thing. I, 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 just remind me how what's he doing at the moment in your episode. Roughly speaking, um, without too many spoilers, uh, he's just been to see Mister Big. <laughs> mm. Oh, and just informed him of about carrot and stick. Yes. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yes, carrot and stick. That's all. That, that's yeah. That was the carrot. This is the stick. <laughs> Twitch your finger. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. I'm I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. But I'd like I say, there's a couple of episodes a little bit further down from where you are now, Jim. And it's just a little bit like okay. I I appreciate the backstory, but I could have had that spread throughout the other episodes. If you get a, you get yeah, main, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so that's but that's that's a minor niggle to be honest. And um, yeah, that's about it really. I I've I mean I haven't really watched an awful lot. Um, uh, there's not been an awful lot on TV to watch, thanks to uh, our wonderful kicking an onion bag tournament. <laughs> um, <laughs> kicking a pig's bladder into an onion bag. So um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, it seems like all the streaming services have kind of realised that as well. So there's kind of it's all kind of gone quiet for a bit. In fact, the the biggest thing on Netflix is um, FIFA Uncovered, which is some major documentary about corruption in football, and it's like. I'm sure that's really interesting, but can we not? <laughs> I tried to watch it. I got really bored of it, to be honest. Yeah, is it yeah. okay? I haven't seen it, so I don't know. But um, yeah, okay, fine. Um, and yeah, I mentioned Andor last week, didn't I? So that's it. So that's done. Yeah. Um, that's it. That is it for this week. I really have nothing. Sometimes it just goes that way, though. Um, <laughs> next week. Uh, let's just double check the time next week I'm going to be looking forward to a wonderful journey a journey towards Birmingham for a works do I'm sure it's going to be great because getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning to get a train at 7 is to go <laughs> to go halfway across the country to have three activities in groups of 300 are is, you going to climb a mountain again? I really don't know and I really hope not but you know, I mean, I don't think there's many mountains in Birmingham. But the last, considering the last time I was in Birmingham, Jim, if you recall, we yes, uh, I, uh, <laughs> 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 it didn't, it didn't, it didn't go quite the way we expected. So um, yeah, me and Birmingham <laughs> is a bit like Homer Simpson and New York, you know. And then the chuds <laughs> came. Um, so yeah, I, you know, maybe next week will be a bit more lively. Anyway, so that's it. There you go. Cool. So sometimes we do it quicker than others. Um, all I'm going to finish with is the fact I've just noticed on um, on the uh, on the not the onion Reddit is a news story that's just leaked, which is uh, which is just dropped, which is dog shoots owner dead after stepping on his shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Is that an American based story? <laughs> do you think? I tell you what. I tell you what. Just just seeing as we've got a little bit of time, take a guess. At where it is. Florida. <laughs> oh, bingo! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there you go. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Ah, uh, the, old, the old days of... <laughs> Florida man on Fark. <laughs> yeah. Was it Fark? Was it? it was Fark, wasn't it? Yeah. Or Dig? Well, that, they had a whole new category that was just Florida. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> anyway, so that was that. Just another thing. Um, and that's it. So what we'll do is we will uh, 
leave it there. Like I say, there was no feedback for um, was it uh, was it see how they run, which is mm-hmm. very odd. But there you go. But just a reminder that if you do want to send any feedback in, as ever, you've got the email, which is feedback at blackdogpodcast dot com. You've got um, the Facebook group, which is facebook dot com slash groups slash the Black Dog Podcast, and now you can hit us up on Mastodon if you can actually work out how to get on it, and that is Black Dog Podcast at podcast dot uh, podcasts dot social. Just hit us up there or just look for at Black Dog Podcast on there and you'll find us. Anyway, that's that. So what we shall do is we shall wrap it up. We shall take a break. We shall run the jingle and then we will be back to discuss Beware, my lovely. (laughs) I was trying to do some dramatic music. I failed entirely. (laughs) Roll the jingle. Ho, ho, ho! It's the unconventional Christmas movie season on Black Dog! Ho, ho, ho! Ho, ho, ho! Ho, ho, holy shit! <laughs> and that's... <laughs> and, there, and so the season has started. <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> yes, it's the unconventional Christmas movie season on Black Dog, and we are starting with Beware My Lovely. Beware My Lovely is a 1952 film noir crime film directed by Harry Horner. Horner, sorry, I couldn't read my own handwriting there. And direct, uh, starring Ada Lupino, Robert Ryan, and Taylor Holmes. The film is based on the 1950s play The Man by Mel Donnelly, who also wrote the screenplay. And it basically star, stars Lupino um, as a widow impulsively who impulsively hires a handyman to help her with the house repairs, repairs and cleaning. Uh, she quickly discovers that the handyman is dangerous and he keeps her inside his house for an entire day and his manoeuvres and paranoid imaginings and instability make it impossible for her to summon help or to escape. Now, Jim, this was your pick. It was. So you will go last, sir. Last, I say. <laughs> and um, so it's, yeah, that's it, really. It's over to you, Elton. What did you think of <sighs> Beware My Lovely? What did I think? Well, I'm only I, I'm only saying this because we're not doing the the box office because there's no box office at all information <laughs> on this at right. all. Yes. Okay. Uh, I I went into this a bit worried mm. because I I was thinking back. Excuse me, my phone. Uh, I was thinking <laughs> back. Um, <laughs> bloody bloody am- kids! Goddamn kids! <laughs> bloody amateur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. I I was worried because the last film, hang on, what was it? No, that was, no, yeah, it was the last film where I was talking about uh, the detective films that I really haven't got on, like the the noir stuff. Yeah, you were talking about see how they run. Yeah, and I thought this was in the same sort of vein. Mm. And it it didn't appear to me like it was. Hmm. And so I went into it going, oh, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this. I'm a bit worried about this. Mm. And I really enjoyed this. Mm. It was nice, toit, mm. compact, mm. not overstaying its welcome at all. Mm-hmm. I thought the acting was good. Mm. I thought some of the shots were really good and mm. uh, creative. And I, 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 I watched it twice. I really appreciated it. So, nice. yeah, thank you, Jim. This was good. Yeah, my pleasure. Cool. Um, my 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 review is much the same. I mean, the whole film could be summed up as, clearly he's a wrong Um <laughs> from the off. But um, but obviously you're seeing it from the, 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 the viewer's point of view as opposed to the, the character's point of view. But um, no, I thought for, for a movie of only 77 minutes long, I thought it was actually um, pretty, darn, pretty darn compact and tight. It 
it does fall into a few of the old sort of of their time tropes, you know what I mean, with sort of like ladies ladies are not able to climb through windows because that would be indelicate kind of thing. <laughs> but um but no, I thought it was really smart. I I thought the the portrayal of the the multiple um the multiple personalities that the main character had um were were well were well done because you know normally you know with you know with something like that you know with ha- howard changing you know changing personalities you'd get something like nowadays you get something like split with um james mcavoy you know changing his eyebrows and going all you know feel cool on it you know just all suddenly his face contorting and going yeah i'm someone completely different <laughs> andy circus style but he doesn't he kind of stays himself and it's only by his actions do you suddenly go oh oh we're dealing with dark howard now not nice howard and it was interesting i wonder kind of how much of it informed things like psycho going forward and it's just it, i thought it was an interesting film it's an interesting curio let's put it that way it's, it's a film that i i really enjoyed watching and i found myself getting very tense at mm. but yeah it's it, it was it was interesting yeah it was cool a very very cool film and I'll go along. Thank you, Jim, because this was not be on my radar even in the slightest. I don't think. I found it because um, mm. uh, Nightmare Alley started all of this, mm. and the guy found oh, there was an original Nightmare Alley, mm. and it's a film noir. And I thought mm. well, that doesn't sound like because I think of film noir. I think Sam Spade, Humphrey Bogart, hard boiled mm. detectives, which is part of noir, but that isn't what noir is. Mm. Noir isn't necessary detective stories detective stories can be noir yeah but what the noir bit is is um uh, showing the seamy side of life and showing mm. um things that you wouldn't normally see and having heroes that aren't actually good guys mm. and shades of gray and just ge- generally it's kind of it's that sort of sort of Kind of like a gritty realism of going, you know, and going to some of the really dark places that makes something noir, rather than the hard-boiled detective, which yeah. is kind of what we all think of. And I discovered there's just tons of these movies, and actually, I mean, not no, just not knocking things like the Maltese Falcon and the, those classic Bogart pictures, but yeah. things like Double Indemnity, where an yep. insurance investigator falls for a woman and agrees to you know, help murder his her husband. And, yeah. Yeah, and gets embroiled in these terrible plots. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and it's all these about yeah, you know, people people who get suckered into doing bad things, or people who just kind of got real problems, but they're not just kind of mustache twirling. Ha ha! I'm a psychopath. They're more like mm. this guy. These kind of really interesting sort of psychological studies. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think a modern reference point for this mm. is Memento. Yes, actually. That's that's a very good point. Because so, I think I've watched it a few times. I think he's not so much split personality, he's the fact that he had he has no short term memory. But mm. he's aware his memory just turns off. And mm. he's aware something has happened and then he starts getting tense and anxious and obviously he's got lots of trauma where this has got him into trouble in the past. Mm. And this sort of, you know, it turns into rage, the frustration. Mm. Uh, but this, it's always kind of, you don't know when his reset's going to happen, but also neither does he. No. It's not, it's not like a, a fixed, it's not like Memento where there's a discrete cycle where blunk, yeah. you know, the tape's white. With this, it's more, far more fluid. Mm. And I guess where a lot of the tension from, because Ida Lupino's working out that, hang on, his memory goes on the blink. Yeah, but, where, but when and how much will he remember? Mm. And can I possibly use that? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> especially towards the end. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of yeah. It is really quite interesting, quite interesting film. And and also, yeah, I mean, just I'm not taking any credit for this, but you know, just looking up film noir. I mean, one of the things it notices it, it, in the definition is a genre of cinema cinema filmmaking marked by a mood of pessimism, fatalism, or menace. And I think that kind of sums it up. That it, 
bear, beware my lovely has all of those. Mm. He doesn't have to have detectives in 1950s wide brim hats going in all the gin joints in all the world, you know. It, you know, this is a dame whose legs go all the way up and all that kind of crap. It's got, it's, um, it is, it's a fatalistic menacing movie. It's mm. kind of interesting. Um, well, I mean, what did you think about it, Jim? I mean, what was your... Well, so what? And this is my second time of watching it. Mm. The thing that I picked up this time is it said in 1918. Mm. And the spectre of the war hangs very heavily over this. Mm. And in fact, that's part of Howard's problems is that um, he was rejected by the draft board as being mentally incompetent. Mm. And so knowing a bit about it, I mean... If you didn't go and fight in the First World War, there was a certain section of people, mm. um, sociologists call them arseholes, I think. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's, it's a quality scientific term, probably from, it the, is, it probably is. from the same uh, scientific <laughs> study as, um, as your, um, uh, did, your doctor's, um, <laughs> doctor's description of cutting out that lung. <laughs> yes. uh, but you know what I mean? They, they, they would, like, you know, like literally hound you in the street saying, why aren't you fighting? If you're an mm. able-bodied young man, you say, you're conscientious, object, you're a coward, and throw white feathers at you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that, that sort of sense of inadequacy of a man who can't be a man. Mm. Mm. And compounded in a man who can't remember who he is, <laughs> almost. Yeah. He's kind of a, it's like a massively volatile sort of powder, you know, powder keg. Mm. Um, but I think that that's. But she lost her husband in the war as well, mm. and then that's that's an interesting sort of dynamic there. There's, a, I think, for the audience in the fifties, there'd be a bit more. There'd be a theme there that we we don't necessarily spot. Yes, because the first time I didn't really pick up on nineteen eighteen. Oh, it's just the past. It's an old movie, mm. and then it's kind of oh, hang on, no, that is very significant. You know, yeah. as I said, because also a lot a lot of people did come back from the war. <laughs> As bad as Howard, frankly. Yeah, yeah. You know, with all kinds of neurological problems. Well, exactly, because I was going to say, because that's the thing. At first, I was thinking PTSD. Well, yeah, that's why I was sick and watching. I thought, oh, hang on. I remember it says something about him and the war, and is is this sort of, Mm. um, you know, like what they used to call shell shock, Mm. covering a variety of different uh, ailments, you know, and Mm. traumas. Yeah, but the, the but the realization that you know it, he actually never took part in it makes it even more. Oh, I don't know, not, not scary, but slightly disturbing in terms of his character and how he's how he's kind of freaking out and changing, you know, and, and psychologically shifting because it's not actually the war that's done it; it's the the lack of war almost. He's always, he's always been like this. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Are you uh are you were you particularly impressed with it the second time round then was it a better better watch second time then I thought it was very interesting the second time round because you know what the setup is mm. you're watching these these little ticks when he's alone mm. and where something he's wincing and he's kind of you can see he's almost he's having flashbacks although the, the film doesn't make anything of it mm. and he's you know there's the thing with his coat mm. he's, you know he's very protective of his coat but then yeah. If every day you get up and leave somewhere and you don't, you're not going to find your way back there. And you're going to, you know what I mean? You'll be very yeah. protective of your coat because he probably sleeps under that coat. That's true. That's yeah. the only thing. He, that's his, that is his home. Mm. And that that's why he puts it away and then covers it with a, you know, with a blanket. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's the most important thing. It's his anchor. Mm-hmm. And there's lots of little details like that that it's kind of like, this was really well thought through, mm. um, and it's so much more effective than your, your standard sort of movie psychopath, mm. because you do feel for him, you do feel sorry for him. Yeah, but at the same time, he's kind of—he's just too—he—he he needs to be somewhere secure. Bless him. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Definitely. Yeah, because he because he is a bit full on when he goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say the least. <laughs> Yeah. So, what about what about you then? Now, and I mean, uh, you, you know, we've we've talked about like you know the, the initial thoughts, but I mean, you said you weren't into the sort of like the fifties detective movie thing, like see mm. how they run. I mean, how did this strike you then? Was it why was it 
you know, was it that different for you? Or you were... Well, you guys mentioned a, a couple of movies. I haven't seen Memento. I, I bought it ages ago. I have it on the shelf ready to go. I just haven't got around to doing it. So I'm a bit right. disappointed in that. Mm. You sure you've not seen Just Forgotten? <laughs> yeah, check, you your, check own. your own for a tattoo. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. You fucking nicked my joke. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> Yeah, go on. Um, I forgot where I was going to go with that. There you go. Oh, see, <laughs> no, 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 that's appropriate. <laughs> well, it's, it's true, but it's annoying. <laughs> what did I come into this room for? Oh, <laughs> where did I put my keys? Where are my glasses? Mm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I am scrabbling around to remember what I was trying to say now. Uh, mm. I, I don't know what it is about the detective stuff. I still mm. haven't put my finger on it yet. Mm. Uh, I, I didn't know about the noir stuff. I I thought it was like a label that you, you gave stuff. So mm. I'm, I'm learning things every day. Yeah. So that's good. Mm. This is, oh, that, there it is. Uh, you guys mentioned other movies. Mm. I related it to Misery. I don't know why. Mm. No, but, no, that's similar. I think. Yeah, that's definitely. A, I think that's a good shot. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the kind of captive and the person that doesn't want to be there, and mm. it's that moment where you have where um, Helen, mm. you can see her working it out, and she knows how to talk to him in certain ways. Mm. She sees what Howard is projecting on her. Mm. And she kind of manipulates herself into, okay, right, he, he's talking to me like this, so he's calm, so maybe I can manipulate him to get around this sort of situation. Mm. You know, that, that no, just unlock the door. Unlock the door. It's fine. You know, she, she's yeah. learning how to deal with him. Mm. A bit like, I, I forget the characters in Misery, but the the man and the An woman. Yeah, and, Annie. Yeah, and, and she can run really hot and cold at times, and so he has to relate to that doesn't he yeah and helen is doing exactly the same to howard in this where mm. she's watching him catching him and going okay i need to be like this or just run away type mm. thing yeah and it was interesting watching that kind of cat and mouse thing i i put in my notes ptsd mm. and now i have scrubbed that out <laughs> because <laughs> we just said it yeah yep go I was like, oh, okay fine uh yep. but that's what i was thinking all the way through maybe this guy mm. is like kind of shell-shocked from something because it is after the war she has lost her husband and you do have that bouncing round and he sees the coat and he's like oh i i'd rather fancy myself in this mm. starts wearing his coat mm. and you're like okay maybe there's something there but obviously it's not it's it's kind of the rejection from that, but I yeah it's there was there was some good balancing around between the two characters mm. playing off, and I I like the way that it was possibly calling back to other things as well. There's very subtle introduction mm. at, at the very beginning where you have Howard putting up a screen window. Yeah. Now is that? I, I'm I'm mm -hmm. sure this is way too sorry. I, I apologise, Tim. No, 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 like exactly that, but, you know, no, no. This is just this me. is what you're here on the show for. You're yeah. Tim Foyle hat, right? <laughs> you are you Generator. are you are a resident. You are a resident a sponsor for Baker Foyle. <laughs> <laughs> is that mm -hmm. what happened with Helen, where she smashed a window to get out or to speak to other people? Uh, and, yeah, and he he's kind of fixing what had happened and making it right. And then he walks in and sees the, the body of the lady who blinks, by the way. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, <laughs> I'll scrub that off my list now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, he, he puts a hammer away and you're like, mm. I only yeah. caught this on the second time round, obviously, because you need to know these things to, to mm. catch these things. But yeah. he puts a hammer away, he puts things away, he starts talking to her, and you know that she's already dead behind the scenes. Mm. And you're like, okay, is this? it's like a Groundhog Day thing where he just does this and goes, oh, because the first watch, I was watching him and going, well, why are you running away, mate? You found yeah. someone. Mm. Don't run away. Otherwise, you get accused of that. That that funny enough, that was my first thought when I watched it. It was just like you're sitting there going, 
Oh, God, why is he running away? What the fuck? Why don't you just stay there and just call the police and just sort it all out? But then mm. I, then obviously that becomes a lot clearer later on. That mm. This isn't his first rodeo. No. no. So do we think it is like a split personality or is it a memory lost thing? Because he forgets he has keys, but then remembers he has keys. Hmm. That's a good question, Jim. <laughs> I, I, th- I think it's more, it's more memory, it's more like memory loss than so like a, a schizoid condition. It is mm. more, it's kind of, he kind of, he literally has, um, like a leaky bucket for a memory, right? And things will just completely slide out mm. of it, but then things will sometimes some things come back. Right. This is hitting far too close to home for comfort, this is. <laughs> yeah, especially after the conversation we had just five minutes ago. You remember. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Karen, anyway, my you. week. Yeah. Anyway, what do you mean Darren's not here? Um, <laughs> uh, Darren was supposed to be here. He forgot to turn up. Um, no, um... I well, the, the the memory thing um, mm. with him, I don't know. I I I'm wondering because when the niece comes in, he mm. he gets really tri- she, she's a cow, by the way. Oh, yes, she is. yeah, yeah, absolute cow. But mm. it really does trigger him into a situation where he's so frustrated he locks himself in that house. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say that that reminded me a lot of the um I guess I guess it's Psycho 2 that it kind of gets explained, but it is in Psycho that that whole thing of, you know, when confronted with a with a strong woman or someone who is, you know, that that Norman is kind of even slightly attracted to in any way or, you know, disturbed by, he goes into this kind of psychosis where his mother reappears. Mm. And it felt to me a bit like that in terms of kind of, you know, she suddenly, she's making herself an ass, but she's also flirting, flirting her knickers off around him. Mm. And he just kind of snaps because it just changes something in him. And I was wondering whether or not it's not just memory loss, but it is some kind of like protective personality that comes out Mm -hmm. to sort of, to sort of act in a way that he's too nice to do. Because that becomes that becomes the kind of the on off switch you kind of keep seeing throughout the rest of the film is that Howard goes, Oh, you're not like everyone else, you're really nice and I really like you and then all of a sudden, you know, the you know, the evidence of a double cross appears and then after a few seconds, evil Howard appears again, who takes charge and throws her in the basement and locks the doors and I have just had a thought. Okay, steady. Oh, go ahead. Go for it. Go I for it. I just had a thought. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. he locks the door to kind of keep himself in his own head. And where you have Helen there, and it's only him and Helen there, that you mm. have like the 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 devil and the angel on the shoulders. That's basically mm. them bouncing around in mm. his own head. And mm. when someone tries to enter, yeah, he refuses them entry and sends them away. Locks yeah. it again, doesn't let her out either mm. because he knows that will cause problems. And it just, there, I think there's, there's more to this really. It, it's, mm. it's saying about possible, you, you mentioned earlier on, it, it, there's layers that we might not know mm. because Helen has lost her husband. So that, that doesn't really resonate with me because mm. my husband didn't go off to war and I lost it. That you remember. That I remember. <laughs> and, and Howard mm. is the other person walking around that doesn't go off to war and he gets tarred and feathered and mm. what have you. And, but we, we, I've never lived through that. I've never seen that. I, I have no relation to that. But that, that's mm. an interesting thing on it was of the time. Mm. And, yeah, sorry, I once again lost my train of thought. But It's okay. Yeah, I'm just wondering... It, I I know I was going to mention like the PTSD, but that's kind of slid off the side. There's also like the the marital abuse side of things. I don't know whether they were trying to hit at that either. Mm. 
I don't. I don't know. Uh, go on, Jim. Sorry, you were going to say. Well, that's, that's interesting because there is that kind of certainly there's that toxic masculinity that he kind of he said, "Oh, you're nice, you're kind. Can I live here?" Mm. But you, you, you do sort of the way he behaves is kind of no. He would have to be the man of the house. That wouldn't do. Mm. You know what I mean? He'd take charge and be more than a lodger very quickly. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it, yeah. And that's the thing. He comes on. I mean, you know, using modern day sort of phrasing, but he comes on pretty strong with that. Mm. It's not. It's not just like a sort of like a. And I don't know. And this is the one thing I was going to say. I can't. Some of the stuff. Some of the decisions. That you know the way he acts, the way she kind of doesn't seemingly react to certain red flags. I was trying to work out in my head whether or not the speed at which this all turns around and happens really quickly and makes her f- feel slightly naive. I was trying to work out whether or not that was a an actual thing because of the era and the time and the way people reacted, or whether it was a kind of constraint of the of the runtime to make everything feel a little more compressed. Because, well, like the damsel type. Yeah, the damsel role. in distress thing. Because, cause, you know, because... Uh, oh, God, I'm trying to remember his name. Sorry, um, I was going to say a, a name, but I was going to say the character. Mrs. Helen, or Miss Gordon, you know... She, you know, he, as soon as he goes into the first kind of, you, you'd send me away like everyone else, you'll get rid of me like everyone else. And he's clearly not right, right from the off. And yet she's still like, oh no, stay here, wax my floors. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's him searching for um, sympathy, isn't it? Exactly. And mm. I, and I was just trying to work out whether or not that was just a, Sort of like the 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 foibles of the time, you know that the 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 you know females were supposed to be subservient and more understanding and kind of hanging on their every, you know, hanging on a man's every whim and all this kind of nonsense, or whether or not it was like no, she has to be that understanding. Otherwise, the film doesn't start, and we've only got sixty minutes left to do the do the the, <laughs> the act two and three. Um, and I was just wondering what. You know, if you guys had any thoughts about that, because that was to me, that was one of the things I was kind of like wrestling with all the way through. It's like she does I, seem horrifically naive. <laughs> well, the thing is, I think she is just she lives in a small town and probably is, yeah, you know, very naive. Most people, most people, you know, God willing, you will mm. never meet a Howard. Yes, let alone be stuck in a house with him. Mm. And I think at first she genuinely, this man has problems, but I, you know, I will not. I will not shun him. I will not stigmatize mm. him. I will try and help, and you know what I mean. Do the mm. right thing. Yeah, I mean, certainly in in terms of noir, watch and having watched generally a lot of um, films like the forties and fifties, mm. um, I find it's very interesting. We have an idea that they were very, very sexist. Mm. I I've got a theory that the seventies films are far more sexist. Oh God, yeah. Okay, and and it's in the, in the 60s, and particularly in the 70s, you get crap women running, screaming, oh, I've fallen over, mm. oh, I've been captured. Yeah. If you oh. watch a lot of noirs, a lot of the female characters are tougher than the men. Mm. They're hard as nails. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Never. And in, in the context of the genre, she, she's like, I think, because she's a genuinely, uh, you know, nice, nice lady. Mm. Everyone thinks very highly of her. Uh, but in she was somewhere quite small and intimate, and it is just kind of, you know, she's not prepared for mm. a Howard. And indeed, I think most people now, even with our better understanding of mental health, wouldn't be prepared to be in that situation. No. And, uh, but certainly in the 50s, mm. <laughs> when awareness wasn't even nearly as great, mm. you would be really onto a sticky wicket. Of yes. Like, what am I dealing with here? What's the best way? And I think a lot of the time watching the second time, I felt she's trying to always de-escalate things. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you reckon maybe I'm being naive in this sort of thought, mm. but where the war has happened mm. and I, I don't mean this to sound crap or anything like that, but half the men aren't there anymore, are they? No, no, and yeah. and so you are living in a world where women have just got on with stuff. 
Mm. They've had to deal with people dying and re receiving messages about people dying mm. and still have to carry on and, and doing like looking after the house and the, the children are still there and still have to get on with life. Mm. And so with Howard turning up, he seems when we see him, when he turns up at the house, he seems very pleasant, very, I don't know, just sociable. He, mm. He's able to uh, have a conversation with her and uh, about the bloody dog ripping his jacket and stuff like that. But uh, you know, it's like the, the dog knows are wrong. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Always trust the dog. If there's any, <laughs> if there's one takeaway from this film at all, yeah. yeah. Go on. I, I'm not saying that she's looking for another man or anything like that, but you have that. Oh well, you know, here's a man. We need this man to help out around the house. He can, he can do, uh, he can climb up on the roof and do all the roof stuff. Mm. I'm not saying that she can't, but that's the way it was perceived back in eighteen, mm. uh, nineteen, eighteen. Yeah. But it's well, there's a man. He can go on the roof, and I can carry on with these rugs. I'm, I'm talking about <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll change the rugs. Yeah, you because know, mm. she was doing the rugs. I'm talking myself into a corner. I apologize. <laughs> But I know it's rather he's hired as a handyman. Yeah, and that's his take, job. If you take like you know the uh, the sex of the characters out of it, mm. I mean, there's some things you can do around your house yourself, mm. and there's other things you get you get the yellow pages out, and you get a man in overalls to come and do it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of she just needs someone on a regular basis just to take care of all these repair jobs that's a bit outside her skill set, maybe. Mm. Yeah, or maybe she doesn't have that with the time. <laughs> yeah, as well, you know, because she's running a guest house, and you know, it makes sense to have a guy who who knows who knows more than she probably she about than she does about stuff to just get all these jobs done properly. Well, she mm. was run off her feet, wasn't she? She well, had so it, much yeah. to do, yeah. didn't she? Yeah. And so with a, a guy turning up like this, mm. she's not gonna the, the first stench of foul play from him she's not going to be like what get out of my house go i'll just get another man mm. that's not going to happen right. it's going to be well okay how can i how can i de-escalate this how can i work around this and, mm. and let's get back to work and let, let's maybe if it doesn't work then i just don't rehire him again because he, mm. he's given me that sympathy thing yeah hmm okay cool i mean no it's just it was just it was yeah, for me, it was just that was the one bit where I was kind of like, mm, you seem you seem to be remarkably oblivious to quite how randomly not mad this guy is. But like I say, I mean, you, you as you say, you know, it, this it was different times, different circumstances. And, you know, she was obviously a good person in need of help and needed help. And so took it where it was offered. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the way, yes. I just to reiterate. By the way, the niece was a cow. <laughs> just just because I didn't get to sort of like fully vocalise that myself, but yeah, she was a cow. Well, she's very much like a lot, a lot of noir female characters, so kind mm. of um, nasty, vindictive, mm. uh, predatory. Yeah, antagonistic. A thoroughly, a thoroughly bad lot to get involved with. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, lazy as well. <laughs> lazy as arse. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that book would just be replaced by a phone nowadays, wouldn't it? God almighty, yeah. I mean, she wouldn't even get close. <laughs> she wouldn't even get close to sitting down with the thing. She'd just walk straight in and straight out the back door and not even stop, would she? Just carry <laughs> the face down in the book. In the, straight in to the, the fridge, out the fridge, straight up to upstairs. Yeah, exactly. And you'd be like, all right, Mrs. Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be it, wouldn't it, really? <laughs> Well, that's it because she's like her aunt. I was never mm. not sure whether she's her real aunt or whether it's just kind of she's a friend of the family. And yeah. her mother sends her around there, just like, get out of my fucking hair, you little bitch. Yeah. Oh, Go and do it. some chores. Mm. Years and years ago, we all used to have aunts, didn't we? Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, definitely. Oh, God, yes. My When we used to go around to my nan's house, mm. we had Auntie Doris next door. She wasn't my auntie, no. but we called her Auntie Doris. Well, oh, fun, yeah, yeah. yeah, funny enough. So same here. My my dad's, uh, my granddad on my dad's side, I used to go over there every Sunday. And while my dad and my granddad sat there talking about cricket until the cows came home on a Sunday morning, after I'd read my comic that was laid out for me, I went next door to auntie, who was some random old lady who just wanted to be visited 
<laughs> and my dad would just send me and my brother around there and we just sit there while she fussed all over us and just kept us busy and got us drawing stuff and it was just like who is this woman? <laughs> it, was only, it, was only, it was only after she died, sort of like a couple of years before my granddad died. And it was just like, uh, there I am now as a sort of like 14, 15 year old boy going, who was she? <laughs> who the hell was she? But yeah, oh, my kids are too old for me to start doing that now. That'd be weird if I started doing that now. Yeah. Yeah. Go see your aunt. <laughs> go see your auntie. How is she related to his dad? Shut up. Go next door. <laughs> it wouldn't be the same. Um, Anyway, can can I just talk about a couple of things which I noticed, which I thought were interesting? Firstly, the um the the resolution, the 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 how she she eventually got rid of him, and and the the helpfulness of BT engineers, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because. I don't know about you, but if someone turned up to fix my uh, telephone line now and then I politely told the person in confidence that there was a psychopath in my in my kitchen, could you please escort him to the police station? Do you think they would necessarily do that? Or would they just get in the car and fuck off and say, we'll be back tomorrow? <laughs> well, it... In my experience, they wouldn't have turned up in the fucking first place. <laughs> <laughs> Been a fortnight later. Yeah. <laughs> because it, there would be none of this kind of, we detected your phone's broken, we've popped round to fix it. Yes. I'd have to ring them, mm. take two days to get through a torturous for the automated phone system that puts you in queue and cuts you off six times. You go speak to someone who's probably fifth language is English um, and can only write in crayon and find the next slot for an engineer is in a fortnight's time. And then the cunt won't turn up. <laughs> so, so what we're saying is not the most unbelievable thing is, is <laughs> any of it, apart from the fact that the engineer turned up <laughs> on the off chance because their that's, went dead. That's, that's the price of privatisation, folks. I mean, in the old days, say... <laughs> People are saying, I'm trying to I'm trying to ring Helen, I can't get through. An engineer goes round. Yes. Not now we have to hear from the account holder, bollocks to it. None of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Do but- you have your password? <laughs> yeah. Can I yeah. can I have the seventh and ninth character of your password? There is a man in the house who's trying to kill me. Yes, just right a second, though, sir. Um, what's your account number? <laughs> He's trying to kill me. Can you send someone around? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, we will do that, sir. But um, you might have to go through to our complaints department. See if we can help you out there. No, can you phone the police? I'm sorry, sir. I'm not allowed to do that. Plus, um, we need some authorization. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> and, and what is your memorable word? Yeah. Psychopath in the house. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. that doesn't compute. That's not the right one. Yeah, can you give us can you give us the third and twenty fourth number in your <laughs> password? <laughs> oh, I haven't got the paper here. I'm sorry, can we just pass you across to accounts complaints? Oh, we we did send you an Enigma machine a couple of years ago. <laughs> Could you just pull that out of your, your office and uh, yes. try and work it out, please? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The, qu- the, the quantum qubits number that is, that is constantly regenerating every 35 <laughs> milliseconds. Can you just please enter that in? <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Anyway, what did you think about that finale? I mean, did you did did that work for you? That she just sort of went, "Oh, go on, off you go, Howard. Follow this nice man. He'll take you. To, he'll take you." I mean, or did you think at some point that the 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 nice man was going to end up filleted on the bonnet of his own car? <laughs> Well, it it could have been Howard turning up at someone else's house saying, "I hear that your phone's down." <laughs> that would that would have been a nice little twist. Oh, that uh, could work, couldn't it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. Howard. Howard never. How, Howard never made it to his destination. However, <laughs> he 
he he later went on to do a whole string of adverts for the Halifax. Um, <laughs> I, I think it screams of a world that we don't live in anymore, where you can ask different people from different professions other things. We live in a world of that's not my job. Mm. Mm. And then I don't, they weren't living in a world, or I, I assume that they weren't living in a world of that's not my job. It was more, okay, mm. I may not want to do this, but I will do this anyway because this is the right thing to do. Yes. Whereas we, we, we look at things, we go things and, well, I could do that, but it's not my job. I don't mm. get paid for it. Don't mm. care. Let's move on. Hmm. Yeah, uh, it, it was, it's just an interesting take because you just think nowadays none of that would happen. Not even close. <laughs> Not even close. The the the, the repair man. As soon as he, you mentioned psychopath and can you take him, he you wouldn't even finish that sentence, would you? <laughs> you wouldn't even. He would just be. I'm off. <laughs> well, I've, I've got to go around Mrs. Doris's house over, over at number 42. But yes, I'll, I'll come back. I'll collect him and then drop him off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it's a str- I, I quite like it, though, because it is a world that we don't live in. So it is mm. different to what we we have. Mm. Uh, I, yeah, I, I I like the fact that he was going to take him somewhere. I don't know where he was going to take him, but he was going to take him somewhere. And then came back when he realised he wasn't in the, the car or vehicle or wherever it was, banging on the door going, are you all right? Lock yourself in. And he's like, oh, God, we know he's upstairs. Yes. We know he's searching for his coat. <laughs> yes. And it's like, oh, just, well, go with him. Stay with him and then you know what's going on. Otherwise, you're just going to be left there with him. Mm. Yeah. So I, I, I quite liked it, actually. What about you, Jim? <laughs> oh, I, I like it that it's kind of... I mean, now, you know, Peter wants, wants everything explained. Mm. And I like it leaves that open to question of kind of he's just at the door mm. and he's, you assume he's going to step out and go, but he could easily just suddenly change his fucking mind again. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but it's also that thing of kind of, um, you know, what what happens now? You know, does, mm. uh, literally, will he, have, will he flip out? Will he, will he kill the engineer? Or will he, you know, be five minutes down the road and have completely forgotten everything? Yeah. Yeah. Will he even, <laughs> will he even make it as far as the car before yeah, forgetting and just drifting off mm. and just wandering off in a completely different direction? Mm. Yeah. I must admit, I, I mean, I, 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 I was going to say that's the one thing I was sitting there all the way through the whole thing, constantly going, oh, come on. Go on, just go, just go, just fuck off, go on, just go. And I found that was the tensest bits. And then when sort of like someone else or something else would turn up and just cock it all up. Like when well, she, like she nearly gets him to go and that bloody arsehole turns up about renting the room. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, you, you twat. Shut mm. your gob. Shut up. Yeah, shut, shut your up. mouth. Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> I mean... That was that was when I knew the film had me. When he's sitting there and he's going, he's standing there and he's going, "Oh well, do you know anywhere else that we could go to?" Because I was promised that room, and you're going, "Shut up!" I'm sitting there in my head, going, <laughs> "Shut up, fuck up, shut up." <laughs> and I, I mean, that's when I knew that the film had me. It was like, "Oh God!" And then when she tries to write the note on the check as well, and, and it's like, "No, oh, no, no, don't leave the room." Just, just, just write the check there. That's right. Yeah. Oh God! But that bit with the check, there was that one of the shots that I really appreciated, where where he's just staring at her with the check in his hand, and she's backing off. Mm. And then I think she backs off into the other room, and then you see her, and then in the mirror, him looking at her. I thought mm. that was a great Oh, there's shot. A, a couple of really good shots using yeah. reflections. There's another yeah. one where he's reflected in the baubles of the Christmas tree. Yeah. Yes. And that's kind of like, that's really, that's really, that's really good. That's the kind of shot you wouldn't see for like, well, mm. for the 10, 20 years being sort of done. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, there was, there was a few shots like that where I'm sitting there going, now, nowadays, you'd, you'd just... I don't know, you just digitally paint out the reflection or you'd, you know, you'd, you place, place it in a way that you, your camera is like 60 miles away with a, with a telephoto lens and digitally enhances so it matches the resolution. So you wouldn't have the, the camera in the shot. 
but it was just like no no they they've they've done some clever shit there to to angle the camera and angle the 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 mirrors mm-hmm. so that it looks natural but it's obviously showing you a an unnatural reflection mm-hmm. but it's which is both stylistically right for the the story it's telling but also being very clever by hiding the camera crew, the sound engineer, <laughs> mm-hmm. the, the tripod, the the dolly track, everything. It's just like, wow, actually, that's mm-hmm. very smart. I, I was dead impressed with some of those shots. They were really quite cool. And it would be in that tight room as well. I, I, I'd mm. be very surprised if they had more than, what, two two of them rooms? Yeah. No, mm. it, was, it, was, it was a... I believe, I mean, again, I've got not an awful lot of information about this film. I don't know if you have any more, Jim, but... Not a lot. There's not, no one written, there's not a lot written about a lot of these films. No. And it's a no. shame, because I'd love to know kind of like who worked on this, because there's kind of mm. there's some cracking stuff in this. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I know for a fact that things like RKO Pictures, for example, they had like, at one point, they were in a situation where they were making films hand over fist, you know, because they were literally like, you know, 60, 70 minute things and they had to fill a two hour block. And so they were literally making films side by side. So those sets couldn't be deconstructed. I, I don't believe they would have been able to be deconstructed, broken apart, moved mm-hmm. away, moved in. They would have all just been like, it would have been closed set, bang, you've got Repainted. an upstairs. And, yeah, back. Uh, yeah, exactly. Just a couple of flats holding the whole thing together, and like an upstairs and downstairs, and that's it. Or probably filming in someone's house. Well, I think a lot of the studios have their own standing sets, mm. and I know, like for like um, a lot of the Universal cheapies, mm. um, they they have kind of like uh, after a while you, you can start to recognise the sets. Mm. They do a great job in redressing them, which yeah. kind of like. They had like um, a whole universe had a whole chunk of uh, streets, and one mm. was like old Europe, yes, and one was like downtown Manhattan. But yeah. they also had like a, a house that and it has a very particular sort of staircase, mm. which get, you, gets used as a castle interior. It gets used mm. as a hotel. And it turns up time and time again, all dressed completely differently, but mm. it's that you recognise the staircase is exactly the same, and it's in yeah. the same place. Yeah, and so that's how they should save money. And Archeo will have had a, a, a similar setup. Mm. Um, because all the studios did back then had yeah these huge standing sets that were often there for years um mm. well exactly i mean it's I mean, like watching more archeo I'll, I'll probably find this house again a few times <laughs> a couple more thrillers <laughs> and uh yeah. may, may well be in a couple of val luton fucking films because he worked at archeo yeah um, after when i revisit them i'll keep an eye out is that that was your talent's house <laughs> yeah yeah, exactly. Well, I tell. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm. I've literally just discovered on um, on the uh, IMDb page that, funnily enough, that central staircase was a leftover from the set of the Magnificent Amberson, directed by Orson Welles in 1942. Uh, yeah. So that it, makes sense. That's why it has a that unusually. It has a, you can often see the ceiling because mm, that yeah. was something Welles did. Yeah. Um, he, he insisted they build the sets with ceilings, mm. so you could you could tell it wasn't a stage set, and you looked yeah. like you were in a real house. Yeah. It was a trick, Robert Wise. You did the same thing in the Haunting, the original. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah, so to, to allow the camera more freedom to mm. look about because you're not yeah. locking it off to kind of head height, are you? You, mm. you can yeah. look wherever you yeah. like. Which is interesting because you actually get that when Howard comes back in and goes up the stairs, and the camera kind of follows him up the stairs mm. and across the landing and into that into that room, and it's like and you're sitting there going, "Oh fucking hell, he's in the house again!" Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a workout this film on the quiet. It is. It is. <laughs> I found that I was sitting there kind of at first just thinking, "Oh, silly old fifties film, whatever," and then by the end, it's that is that tension kind of toe curling. Fucking get out of the house! <laughs> He's in the house. Go away. Um, my teeth are grinding. For fuck's sake, just end this film. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. Well, so it packs like in for a short running time. Mm. It's incredible. Mm. I mean, it's. I mean, I think. People need to watch more old films because you will learn so much about how to tell a story very compactly and very effectively. Yes. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of... 
I, I think so, uh, the bloke we have in films these days, I think we look back on the current era of cinema the mm. same way we look on back of like, you know, mid 70s triple album. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stupidly yeah. self indulgent, overly long. Yeah. Um, so I said this, it, I was amazed how short it was because it feels a, a, like a lot longer movie. <laughs> Yeah, well, fu- well, funny enough, um, I I took I took a ten second, oh, a ten second, I say, I mean, a, a coffee break. So I went to go and make myself a cup of coffee, and I put it on pause, and I'd only been, I felt like I'd only been watching like ten fifteen minutes, and I looked on the, <laughs> I looked on the clock on the timer, and I'm just thinking, so that's been twenty five minutes, and I'm a quarter of the way through the film. It's like what. <laughs> How the hell? What kind of... And it does. It barrels along at a right old pace. But again, that, that kind of threatened to make me... I started reevaluating her actions, not through the storytelling, but knowing through me knowing how long the film's going and how long it's got and thinking, oh, maybe they just maybe they just sped along her, her naivety for the... <laughs> you know, for, for plot speed rather than actual action. But no, yeah, it's cool. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so first thing was obviously the engineer taking him off, but I was going to also say, how many kids does she look after? I think she's, she's almost like an unofficial sort of child minder. Mm. <laughs> of, um, I mean, there's, there's that thing as well that, you know, she's a, a woman without a husband, she can't have kids. Mm. And so she's surrogate auntie. Yeah, to, to a lot of the neighborhood children. Mm. Um, that, that's something I sort of picked up on the sort of relationship she has with everybody else, mm. and everyone's actually quite protective of her because they know she's a war widow. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's that whole thing of showing you an era and time that you just, you know, these days that will, these days you get thoughts and prayers, and maybe if <laughs> you know. And a few maybe moments of you know sort of like oh you know you know let's 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 have let's have a charity drive for her, but the actual or, or they change their avatar for her. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. You'd put, mm. you'd put, <laughs> yeah. You'd get you'd get you get a kind of little hat band thing that goes along the bottom mm. of your avatar. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Jobs that'll problem do. solved. Jobs are good. And, I've done my mm, bit. Yeah, I've done my bit. Yeah. But uh, no, it was just, it was just a really intriguing thing to see because you're sort of going, wow, you know, this 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 feels like a completely alien th- alien attitude, which kind of kind of adds to the how disconcerting it is because it's like, oh, how naive is this? And then you're thinking, no, actually, people are being nice. This is how yeah. the world was supposed to be. <laughs> Even the like the delivery boy. Mm. He he drops his stuff off. He won't stop fucking talking. I'm surprised he didn't get a clip around the ear. <laughs> yeah. But he was pushing his luck. I thought yeah. he, so he'll live in the fridge if he's not fucking careful first yeah. time. I thought I will lash out and he'll be he'll be in the cupboard. I, the I would I was I was <laughs> honest. I I was honestly expecting her to come back and find Howard just pushing a pair of shoes into a into an upturned <laughs> fridge. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. But the kids recognise when she was having an off day. Mm. So he he, he mm. knows he, he sees her probably regularly, maybe I don't know, every other day. Mm. So he, he's aware of her, he knows her situation, he gets to talk to her, she talks to him back uh, back to him. And he she sorry, he knows her payments as well. Mm. You know, she pays at the end of the month, never pays for checks. Mm. And he knows something's off. Mm. And that, that's interesting to see. Yeah, and again, I, 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 I kind of my brain's trying to work out whether or not that is actually a genuine kind of attitude of the time because you mm-hmm. know you always get you always get your parents, your grandparents, and all those sort of things saying, "Oh, it was different back in my day," and you're like, "Yeah, but was it though?" I mean, I'm sure you still had pedophiles and nasty bastards and killers, and you know, the craze didn't just magically suddenly appear in the 1960s and call it a day, no. <laughs> you know. So. You know, Cri- Crippin was around in the forties, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> and so you start to sort of wonder if it's a sort of like idealized look at the world, or whether or not it's supposed to be a world that the audience is supposed to recognize. Mm. Well, I think the thing is, it's like where they are is a small town. She's a regular customer, mm. 
I, it's, a, it's a small business and it's personal. Mm. Um, I mean, you know what I mean? It's kind of, he, he, as Elton says, he probably delivers every other day or mm. every three days to her. Mm. And he, he'll know everyone on their, on that round. He knows what their, their, their orders are. Mm. And, you know, that's just, just part of the job. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he's kind of, I mean, I mean, now you can you come in and pick it up yourself? Yeah. <laughs> no, it is kind of. Um, yeah. You're not going to. You know, people people did a job and took a pride in their work. Mm. But I, I think I mean, it's old man corner. But I think that has yeah. been lost, and it's not necessarily people's fault. It's the way management treats people, and it filters down from there. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was there was an ethos. You know, in business, like mm-hmm. a little business like that. Yeah. That you know. What made your business survive is that you you had those relationships with the your personal customers. touch. Yeah, yeah. You try and have a have a conversation like that with your delivery driver. It'd be like someone turning up, just throwing a fucking hamburger at you through the door, <laughs> and then running away after taking <laughs> the cash. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, yes. Um, how did you think? How do you think she was? I mean, was she a particularly strong protagonist in the end, or or is that something that we've built? in our heads that, you know, everyone has to be, or was she, did she feel natural? Because what I'm trying to get at is that, you know, there's always, you know, again, looking at it through a modern lens, you've got this whole thing of like, oh, you know, strong female protagonist, an evil man, that sort of thing. And it has to be, everything has to be couched in those kind of terms. Mm. The thing is now, it's kind of because kind of like, we associate, we associate strength with violence. Mm. And therefore, a strong female character has to be Ripley mm. or Ripley Plus. Yeah. And, you know, Teresa said when we this now, you know, there's that scene where he starts, he just pushes her down the stairs. She says, mm. you know, nowadays, he'd have thrown her off the balcony and uh, then mm. she'd have thrown a vase at him and it would have just mm. been a fight for an hour and a half. <laughs> And we'd yes. have cheered, going, "Yeah, strong woman! Look, she kicked the shit out of that guy." Yeah, it would. It would have been. It would and have been home of, alone, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. But you know, is, is is that really? Is that really strong? Is that, I don't know. You know, mm. <laughs> maybe maybe we need to rethink this a bit, possibly. Mm. But you know, I thought I confessed that you know she was out of her depth, mm. and in a way, I thought that was kind of quite real. And she was tr- she was looking, she was trying to think her way out of the situation. Mm. When the second view, I noticed that more. She's She's trying to figure out how he's operating and what to say. Yeah. She's always trying to de-escalate him. But at the same time, she's terrified. Mm. And I think it has a good um, balance of yeah. of that kind of, I'm out of my depth, but I'm trying to think it through. Yeah. Which I think that's pleasingly real. Yes. I mean, I know in, in, if, he, if he rocks up in another noir, more than half the, the female character would have battered his head in with an ashtray oh, yeah. and, and not blinked. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean literally. I mean, we watched one, you know, where literally she stubbed out a, a cigarette on the guy she just killed. Yes, <laughs> you know, walked off and didn't give a fuck. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's kind of. Hmm. No, it was, it was just it's just interesting. Again, it's 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 more about the for me. It's more about that that kind of like seeing the at- difference in attitudes. You know the way that certain people act and and I think that's kind of you know you were saying before about like you know people have to watch older films I think that's right but I think it's also interesting that that sort of change in attitudes over the years would actually be a barrier to entry because people would look at that and go really these days she'd kick him in the balls and run away and all this kind of mm. stuff and, but that's because we've seen it in the movies where they kick him in the balls many, many times. And so yeah. the the art filters into real life, which filters into art again. Mm. Yeah, no, that's, that's true. I, I thought she was a, a great character, actually. I, I felt really so, so sorry for her throughout mm. the whole thing because she's just there trying to get uh, the, the the house that she's living slash working in, spick mm. and span and ready and you know, mm. sending this other person off and he won't stop badgering her and talking to her. So she's got all these things going on and she has to do all the Christmas lists as well. 
<laughs> and sort out the party presents and sort out her uh, niece, which really isn't her niece. It's just another fucking kid in the village. Mm, yeah. It, it, it's so many things. She's so preoccupied with a million things. And then Twatface McDougal rocks up and wants to be a dickhead. <laughs> yeah. Locks himself in, in the house with her. Mm. And then she has to, okay, I'm in a totally different situation. I need to rethink exactly what's going on. Mm. And, and there's there's moments where being strong isn't just about kicking people in the balls. It is just about sometimes saying no, mm. where mm. people don't want to hear that word. Mm. Yes. And when he's mm. kissing her and forcing himself on her and she's saying no, 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 mm. that there's there's nothing unstrong about that. There's nothing soft about that whatsoever. Mm. That is possibly one of the strongest things that she could do at that moment. Yeah. Resisting him and and not just doing the, the sort of yeah. You know the, what we have as an understand, what we have as a preconceived notion of someone going, oh, oh, no, stay away from me. But she mm. says no, but she means yes, kind of attitude, which is fucking wrong. Mm. But you know what I mean? It's like mm. you get that kind of sense with with some media that that kind of has to be portrayed, and that's why you know it's he's evil, but he's been somehow led on or something like that you could you yeah. see that sort of all over mm. the place it's her fault definitely yeah. her yeah uh, yeah sort of thing yeah. and that you just like no come on no but uh, I, mm. I thought she was a great I, I thought there was also a moment where i think when they went upstairs i think to show a room i can't remember exactly what was going on but i thought she had it in her mind to lock him in the room yes and yet he forced her to go into the room first yes yeah Yep, totally. I was totally. Mm. I I was in exactly the same position there. As soon as she opened the door with the key, I thought, ah, oh, she's going to lock him in there. And then he went after you, and it's like, <laughs> oh, oh bollocks, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the problem. I I sat there for most of this whole film, going, oh, it's in the bag now. It's in the bag. No, oh, I'm <laughs> tense again. <laughs> 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 anyway, yeah, so though I I thought this was I thought this was a great little film. Um a nice a nice change from the usual wham bam thank you ma'am action. Like I say, it could have turned into Home Alone. In a modern day version that would have turned into Home Alone, wouldn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely mm. would. Mm. And I thought I thought it was quite refreshing and the the ending wasn't flashy. You know, especially sort of sending them off with with, you know, the BT engineer. But you know, but even so, I thought, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes things don't end neatly with a big hurrah and an explosion and someone jumping in front of a bullet. It mm. was, you know, sometimes it just goes, nope, actually, he walks away. Um, mm. Oh, God, mm. I'm going to do it again. Sorry. Go on. Go on. I had another thought. Darren's mm. not here. That's right. <laughs> well done. <laughs> My week. No. <laughs> the what about the whole thing is about locked in syndrome. Okay, go on in. Where he's he, he's having all these terrible thoughts. He's locked in his own little mind. He locks himself into the house with mm. someone else, and it's like the the counterbalance where he's fighting things over you know when you have an argument in your head mm. and you, you try and preempt what's going on or what's mm. going to happen in the argument mm. he's having that and then at the end you have the, the lights coming through the window and he's like oh that mr so-and-so is here and it, it just fades out and then the dog runs in and it it just felt like well maybe he's just disappearing off that that's mm. the end of him it's all in his head I'm not saying it is all in his head because that's shit, but it's like the lights <laughs> coming through the window and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, just well, maybe there's something there. What you mean? So, so, in, so him walking away was symbolically, mm -hmm. rather than at, than actually physically him disappearing. Yeah. So yeah, okay. I mean, it's an interesting point because I mean, you would never really get anyone's exclusive point of view. And by that, I mean that, you know, when Miss Gordon, I'm saying Miss Gordon, I'm making sure that her name was Miss Gordon. But when when she's down in the basement, you're seeing it from his point of view. Mm. And then when you, when she's outside trying to write a note on the check, 
he's in the other room and you don't know what he's doing. So the shifting perspective, hmm. you know, does you know, it kind of leaves you with that kind of well, who are we following? Oh, but then, but then on the other hand, if it was all in his head, then surely you'd see her reacting and acting differently based yeah. on his perspective. I, I think I'm just pushing something that isn't there, but it, I have well, these moments, I have these no, thoughts, no. and I have to bring them up. No, I mean, to be no, quite... No, worth, it's worth thinking about, though. Yeah, because uh, cause I was going to say, because the one thing that was coming to my mind when you were saying about, like, the, ba- the, the nailing the windows shut, because I completely forgot about the fact that he was nailing the windows shut at the start, um and you know that 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 might have happened before but one of my things was that was symbolic symbolically him locking away his nasty memory that he didn't want to remember yeah no you know? that that's definitely there i think i think there is that, that sort of symbolism yeah uh, cuz it was a stage play and um mm. you know uh they tend to go bigger for, you know for symbolism than um mm. you say screenwriters do yeah but i think there's a lot there's a lot of things i think that are very um sort of me- you know, visual metaphors in this. Yeah. Yeah, especially considering that he's the handyman, keeps the house tidy, and he finds the body in the cupboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. Hang on. That's not a broom. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, right, I think at this point, I think we, unless anyone's got anything specific they want to bring up, anyone, any I, last thoughts? I do. I'm really sorry. I no, do. I'll run it. through them really quick. Dude, okay? dude, no, don't, no, 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 there's it. no, no, it's just in case there was any, if we'd kind of run the course, then that's fine. But if you've got stuff to say, mate, bring it up, go for it. Okay. First one, I like big closets. And I and cannot I, I lie. Could, I, I couldn't help but say it. And I cannot <laughs> lie when he said that. <laughs> Um, the wibbly wobbly bit as well. Mm. Did that only happen once? Because there was a moment where he was having his first rage type thing. It's about half hour in, mm. and he, he hits a, a lamp which goes ding ling 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 ling. ling. Mm. But then he he goes against the door, mm. and then he changes. It goes all wibbly wobbly. The the actual um, uh, film goes wavy like a, a wayne's world type movie where they go right. diddly do, diddly do, yeah. And go, yeah. Yeah. floppy there there is that moment where you know he he's changing in his head but she doesn't see that hmm. and that was interesting i that I, they I were symbolically go... showing it through yeah. the the wibbly wobbliness mm-hmm. hmm. I, d- I think that's the only time you do see it mm-hmm. um it's interesting because if because that's the kind of thing where you kind of think if they use it once they would have used it more than once but it's yeah it's, it's good that they only used it once hmm i mean is it though because i mean i i think that maybe doing it more than once might cement it down as actually something something physically happening in his head as opposed to him just having a memory loss or whether or not they wanted to keep it deliberately ambiguous, because that's because that's the one thing that, apart from that wibbly wobbly bit, and you know, feel free <laughs> to step in here, Jim, because I might be talking out the top of my hat on this. But to me, they deliberately try all the way through to keep it ambiguous as to is it good Howard or evil Howard, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it's like transition transition you know or or was it the um the old um iron side music that turns up in kill bill that sort of thing you know he's <laughs> you know, flashing red lights and close up on eyes and all that sort of stuff and the fact that they don't after that first time mm. kind of says to me that i think they tried it and then thought, actually, it's probably better to keep it subtle and let you guess along with Miss Gordon as to who we're talking to anymore. Well, mm. Maybe they're, they're showing us there is a change here mm. and you now have to work out where all the other changes are. Yeah, yeah, that there is an indication that there's actually actually is a change yeah. as opposed to 
as you say earlier on, you know, sort of that it's just a memory loss thing. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, Mm. What else did I have down? Go for it. The dog running out into the road. I think they missed a a comedy gold moment where you could have (laughs) just had a truck going (laughs) running it over. (laughs) Sorry. Different, no, a different no. time, different time, Elton. <laughs> yeah. Different yeah. time, my friend. Nineteen. Mm. Uh, well, if Guy Ritchie directed it, <laughs> yeah, 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 and there would have been a spray can <laughs> moment across the screen, <laughs> going, going bongo or whatever the name do- the dog was. You know, R.I.P. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nineteen eighteen. Mm. It was set. Mm. Uh, Ida Lupino. Is that how we pronounce mm. her name? I'm, yeah. I'm, for the moment, yes, but we she could be completely wrong. She was born in 1918. I know. Ooh. Interesting. But it's just interesting that she would have got onto the setting. Oh, it's set in my, the year that I was born. Fancy, lovely, Jeff. Fancy that. And mm. uh, I think <laughs> this film predicted the internet. What? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. How many times have you wrapped that foil hat? I'm just asking, you know, is, is the, it, yeah, go on. Right. Okay. I, I when my dad died, mm. uh, we, we had to like get into apps and padlock, oh, sorry, um, uh, apps and passwords and lots mm. of stuff like that with apps. And, and so, mm. and there's a moment where she goes into a, a, a cupboard, gets out a tray, loads of keys in it. Mm. Probably the husband's keys. He knows exactly where they are. He knows what ones don't work, he, but he keeps them. Mm. And there she is trying to work out all the passwords, all the keys. Does this one work in this door? No, that doesn't. And she goes through them and basically predicted the internet. <laughs> Do you know that kind of leaping logic is the, is the kind of leaping logic that's caused this entire season of Christmas movies? You know that, right? <laughs> you are all welcome. My job here is done. <laughs> this is the kind of leaping logic where you turn around and tell me that, that Charlize Theron is mother from Alien. <laughs> oh, that hurts, doesn't it? That, that does still, still burns. Stings. That still stings me something rotten, you mad bastard. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anyway, mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm, I shall say not another word. Jim, do you have do you have any more Baco foil left in the cupboard, or you have you got? No, some? no, I can't, I can't top that. <laughs> Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll leave it there then. Um, I think it's safe to say that we all found this film pretty darn good, and at the at the very least, and um, extremely interesting to discuss. Hopefully, you found it interesting. But um, I tell you what, it is worth seeking out. It is on archive dot org. Um, we have got a link for it on the Facebook group. I will put a link again up for it on the Mastodon page as well just in case anyone's following us and they want to watch this film. Like I say, 77 minutes, tight as a drum in terms of pacing. And, um, yeah, a very interesting film indeed. Thank you very much, Jim. Yeah, My Jim, pleasure. And oh, and yeah. as we know, it was a Christmas movie because, yes. because it had Christmas tree mm-hmm. and presents and deliveries and, and someone says Merry Christmas at least once. <laughs> There you go. And that's all we need for, for, to make it a Christmas movie. <laughs> You're welcome. Sod just having Die Hard. We don't have to just have Die Hard as a Christmas movie. We can watch this every Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and sit there, sit going, fucking go out the house. Go out the house. <laughs> Keep hold of the keys. <laughs> don't walk back in. <laughs> anyway. So, there you go. Any last thoughts, Jin? I think we're all good. No, I'm, no good. I'm good. I'm good. Cool, cool, yeah. excellent. Right, okay. Well, in which case, it's over to me for my random Christmas, uh, unconventional Christmas movie. Now, on the Facebook group and on the Mastodon page, I said, "Do you have out there a you know unconventional Christmas movie, a film which?" Not necessarily at Christmas, but it may have something related to Christmas, because. I think, and it's been mentioned before in many past Black Dogs, which, you know, old and old and new, that me and Christmas movies don't really get on. I'm not really one for Christmas movies. So I thought, well, okay, let's just ask, you know, what 
is an unconventional Christmas movie for you. And lots of people posted up lots of different ideas on both Mastodon and on the Facebook group. But only one person got right the one I'm about to pick. Now, this film is actually set at Christmas. So there you go. There's the tenuous connection. There is actually an appearance of Santa Claus or someone dressed as Santa Claus. It's directed by Terry Gilliam. And it is Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. And it is our, um, free to stream on Amazon Prime. So there you go. Our mm. film for next week is Brazil. Now I'm going to go around the table and ask Jim, have you seen Brazil before? Many times. Aha. Uh-huh. And what do you think of it? Um, it, it, It's a film that always impresses me and a film that always disturbs me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And Elton, have you ever seen Brazil? No, I haven't. I, I've heard of it, but no, I have not mm. uh, seen it. Okie dokie. I won't ask Darren because he's not here. Um, yeah, I've seen Brazil like twice and one of the black doggers who formerly worked at Cartoon with me, uh, Mr. Dave King, has often extolled the values of an extended cut, the Love Conquers All cut. Um, but uh, unfortunately, that is not available on Prime, unfortunately, so we can't really do that. So, if anyone watches, oh, the I'm ex- not sure about that. I, th- I think the cut on Prime is the extended version. Is it because there's because there's, so. there's I'll have to check my notes because I'm. I think we did a commentary club, mm. and I think when I checked the running times, this was the, a, a restored cut. It's not. It's not the travesty that was originally released. Okay, because there's two mm. versions on Amazon, and yeah. one you have to pay for, and one is actually free. So uh, I don't. Okay. Know, so right. I don't know which one's which. Well, say so we did it a while ago, so mm. you know things change in the world of streaming anyway. So. Yeah. Well, if you're watching along with us, watch the one that's free. Don't watch the one you have to pay two ninety nine to pl- to watch because you'll be watching the wrong version. So there you go. So we are going to go to dystopian <laughs> dystopian Britain, <laughs> as as envisioned. By by the guy who brought you Jabberwocky, the Fisher King, and <laughs> Monty Python's the Holy Grail. Um, yeah, and we'll see what everyone thinks of Brazil. I'm sure it'll be a right, bright, wonderful, happy, jolly time. Because <laughs> Brazil's like that. <laughs> it's you... not without laughs, in fairness. Oh, no, it's not without laughs. I mean, you know... <laughs> Anything that has Robert De Niro as a as a ninja te- uh, ninja um, was it plumber doing random air ducts repair and repairing you know it's it's um, yeah it's got to have something going for it but uh, yeah it's based on 1984 that's all I'm saying take it from there so um, yeah we'll leave it there so next week Brazil be there or be square God that's so naff. <laughs> that is such a mad phrase. <laughs> I can only. The 80s. I can only. You're telling apologize. us things are really boss next. Yeah, 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 <laughs> dude. And I'll say cowabunga as I sign off. <laughs> Fuck it, yeah, now fire. <laughs> well, there you go. If this, if there's ever, if the, I, it's 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 my bit of memory going now. I've missed the last forty years. I'm still in 1985 and just really impressed with the computer I've got right in front of me now. My God, didn't he have... Oh, fuck, I fucked up that quote. Oh, Shit. you... Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Bollocks. I, I'm safe. I'm safe from mockery now. <laughs> Elton stepped into the breach. Christ, didn't that guy ever have hair? No, that's not even the quote. Jeez. Oh, oh never mind. <laughs> Stupid fucking brain. You're talking about um, Strickland, aren't you? No, uh, yes, yeah, I yeah. was, yeah. Yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ, did he ever have hair? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, so we might have to do Back to the Future then. Because <laughs> you clearly can't remember it. Um, old man. Um, mayor. <laughs> uh, good run for mayor. Mayor. Mayor Goldie. Um, Anyway, so let's stop before we get ourselves into real trouble. Um, <laughs> so um, we'll leave it there. 
next week, Brazil won't put any 80s f- comments on the end of that. And we'll move over to Pimp's Corner. So, Jim, what's happening over in the wonderful world of Hypnagoria, if we can all remember where we are at any point in time? <laughs> Well, it has been somewhat frenetic as I've been working very, very hard last few weeks to make sure mm. things are, are in the bag for me mm. being, well, probably bloody poorly for a while. Mm. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, I, this week I've just released a my first Christmas ghost story reading, which is mm. the Astro Bay Mar James. Mm. Whereas on my main show, we have uh, my commentary for the 1975 BBC dramatization of it. Nice. Um, but uh, the the big thing uh, coming starting on what day we on Thursday mm. uh, on hypnagoria dot com and on the hypnagoria podcast there will be an advent calendar mm. available in a written form and as a podcast form. Ooh. So every day throughout December there will be a podcast from me going from A to Z through the folklore and history of Christmas. Dude, you do not make it easy on yourself. Let's be honest. No, I mean you know. <laughs> let's let's be frank. There was you had you have three standard streams on the go at any one time, <laughs> and then you've decided to throw in twenty five individual podcasts on a daily <laughs> rotor. I mean, that's more than I've done of Shonky this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's about right. I mean that I mean we thought we were pushing the boat out when we were doing intros once a week for for a couple of months. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. You know, take a rest. <laughs> Are we going to think it actually works out cuz they're all like mm. far, between like 5 and 10 minutes long. Mm. It doesn't actually work out really as doing like four weekly shows through December. Oh, right. As it was I did have to write them because of the text version. That did come to like sixteen hundred words, which is well over t- well under dissertation. Levels. Holy shit! <laughs> okay, and, and about one hundred and fifty different images, mm. um, two of which are entirely unnecessary because iTunes won't can't be asked to scale fucking artwork. No, but no. anyhow, <laughs> grump grump. But uh, mm. but yes, uh, that, that must be, um, be. I think it'll be a lot of fun mm. and. Um, so you'll learn many things you did not know and have a, a few laughs and chuckles and some festive fun along the way. Lovely. I do have a feeling that at some point in the far, far distant future, someone is going to uncover, an, you know, like two-pack style, an entire <laughs> new stream of podcasts from you that were never released. It's like 6,000 episodes <laughs> hidden away for generations. <laughs> anyway cool all of that's over at hypnagoria.com yes indeed you can actually go and see the advent calendar you can't open the doors yet they oh. won't open until the days through clever coding but does it yeah. but does it does it have pork scratchings in it like i've got i mean you know of sorts actually oh my god one door <laughs> <laughs> pork and christmas go back a long way as you will learn mm. okay it kermit and miss piggy <laughs> yeah, my big Christmas Carol. <laughs> <laughs> that's mm. French pub snacks, isn't it? Frog oh yeah, some pork scratching. Oh and yeah, <laughs> there you go. Right, okay, well, brilliant. So uh, we'll look forward to that. So, Elton, what about you, sir? What's going over in Rogue Two? Well, seeing that Jim had uh, everything sorted out for the next month or so, I struggled to get out my last episode because WordPress didn't work on the old. Um, Oh, the scheduling type thing, mm. which was a bit annoying because I thought the last episode was going to come out Thursday, but it didn't. I, I, I noticed it hadn't come out. I was like, oh, mm. okay. So I had to republish it on Saturday or Sunday. I forget anyway. Yes, on but Sunday. It, it, it's us lot talking about uh, the 4 minutes 33. And mm. I, I've got another one in the bag that I haven't sorted out yet. And I'm recording another one tomorrow night. So Is that yeah. the sequel to the 4 minutes 33? No, it's not. No, it's something <laughs> completely different. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Cool. Okay, brilliant. And that's all over at rogue2media.com. That is, yes. Awesome. Okay, and well, like I say, from me... Not a lot. You found us here, so that's all really I can say. You know, as ever, follow us on uh, Facebook, which is facebook dot com slash group slash the Black Dog Podcast. Uh, leave feedback at feedback at blackdogpodcast dot com. 
or follow us on Mastodon, which is Black Dog Podcast at podcasts dot social, and um, yeah, we're over there. Um, I will be doing at some point. I aim to do start doing artwork again, but right now I'll I fucking can't be asked. So there you go. Anyway, that's that. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Elton. You're welcome. <laughs> Normally I say thank you, Darren, somewhere in there, but he's, like I say, he's sick. He's diseased. He's a diseased man. He's probably a diseased husk at this point. And, um, yes, we, we shall see you all next week um, for Brazil. Until then, take care, stay safe, and until then, tassy bye. Bye-bye. I was waiting for Darren then. <laughs> I was going to say, did you leave a gap so I could edit him in? <laughs> anyway. It was my turn for the memory loss. <laughs> yeah, we've all oh, had it. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, was it? Or oh, was it? We haven't started recording yet, have we? Oh, when, when do I press the record button? Oh, no. It says 84 minutes. Fuck. <laughs> anyway. Bye-bye. Um, yeah. You have nice hands. Oh my god, <laughs> that's not that's not an episode. That's not an end. That's 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 a that's a that's a confession that will get someone to come around your house with a with a bag and a fucking long little sleeve jacket. <laughs> right. Anyway, <laughs> thanks everyone. Tell all. <laughs> bye 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 bye. Hello and welcome to the Black Dog Pod. <laughs> oh, oh, goodbye. <laughs> There's a voice that keeps on calling me Down the road, it's where I'll always be Every stop I make, I make a new friend Can't stay for long, just turn around and I'm gone again Maybe tomorrow, I wanna settle down Until tomorrow, I'll just keep moving on Get out of the booth, Jack No I like it in here.